Welcome everybody to the Imperium Cup and we are watching Group H. This is week two, a battle between Jamar, Ascension Lamppost, Agent of Zion, and Erevald. And uh, we have Ascension Lamppost in the first position and we have a pretty stacked row except for the Sidecar Infantry. Not a bad card actually, done some work in a couple of games lately. Um, an extra two daggers has been surprisingly helpful. Uh, other memory, a great Bene Gesserit combo card, two reveal uh, for per persuasion, great. Sadakar Legion, always a workhorse in this game, uh, you'll never sad to have it. Treachery, treachery, people are going to be looking to get that early, it's very powerful if you can cycle it through and use the unload ability a couple of times. And Esmar Tuik, who uh, incentivizes you to get to, uh, yeah, just get more spice, lots of spice, and Solari, so that's great. Um, we've got Helena. In the fourth position, pretty common beast in third. We've got a beast, or we got a baron for second position. All right, that's dangerous. And a Tessie in first position, that is a very nice counter pick to the baron. Usually they are doing similar things and uh, they kind of step on each other's heels. So something to look out for is uh, these two positions fighting while these positions try to sneak by. And uh, we're all ready to go and uh, take it away, players. So we have a pretty good hand from Tessia. Uh, actually, very, very good hand from Tessia. We always like to see a Diplomacy plus a Signet Ring in the opening hand. Uh, the reason being is that it increases your odds of actually um, getting into uh, where you want to go. But when you're in first position, um, it's a little weird because you're going to be ending up uh, using this ring to get into the, the Spacing Guild, essentially, uh, to, you know, because it's kind of like a setback generally when you get a fold space card it's kind of like okay to have but you'd rather have like the bonus from this conflict and this bonus is really really important for a tessia or a baron so the extra influence here with a faction the two solari tessie's looking to take this down with the one dagger in hand baron here uh seek allyzing to the fold space they're going to get full access for two rounds to fold space which is pretty scary uh, players that are on the table need to be aware of that potential. Uh, the beast here is going to be seeking to to uh, still suits, get in the water, just kind of biding his time, doing what he needs to do. And I'll be doing my very darndest to make sure that all players are, have the right amount of resources while I am commentating. Agent of Zion is up, and it looks like a Arakeen for Helena for first action to try to find that access card and finds it. That's a big pickup, big pickup for, for Helena. Uh, probably was trying to find the ring uh, so that you could uh, grab the treachery out of the row as it is, might be looking at actually a daggering up to tech negotiation. For Tessie, we have a signet ring, and these players are playing super, super fast, so I'm going to try to keep up here. We have a smuggling for Tessia. The ring is going to shift down and then back up into fold space or the, the uh, spacing guild i'm sorry uh, conflating the guild with the space that you go to what's the baron going to do here baron's probably going to tech negotiate possibly uh go go to carthag carthag is always good but then you're not buying for anything this is going to be a very very bad buy for the baron i might try something like a tech negotiation here uh kind of get get your tech negotiators going there's some really good tech up here there's a spy satellites, which is going to be game changing for someone, whoever gets it. There's a memo quarters, which is just phenomenal. The extra bonus uh, influence is fine. And, you know, it's not too, too hard to get three influence on four influence tracks. It doesn't come up if the game goes too quickly, but it can be an extra win, an extra point, and a flagship. So, always nice here. So, it looks like we're going to see a tech negotiation from the Baron. Most likely. Yes, here we go. Here's a negotiator. And uh, what's the beast going to be doing? Beast has Diplomacy, Dune, Reconnaissance, Convincing. So could just reveal here for six and take the Treachery. Or could play it safe, uh, use the Diplomacy for Wealth, which I think is the smarter play here because that gives you access to the uh, Dreadnoughts. Oh, isn't going to, though. Interesting. Okay. Oh, thinking about it. Thinking about Reconnaissance to probably Carthag here. Um, obviously there's no other options in blue so yeah it would be either a Carthag or a Wealth I think you just take the Wealth when you can the Carthag is fine but you're not going to win this combat you're not going to win this combat Helena still has an action left so here's a Carthag he's going to try to maybe send a troop in 
don't really like that. Okay, uh, he skip, picks up a diversion, which is you know, kind of awkward most of the time, uh, especially early game. And if he starts going in here to get second place, uh, I don't hate that. I don't hate that. Three three Solari is pretty good. Um, the problem is that is is Helena, or not Helena, I'm sorry, is uh, Tessia's um, combat going to stay here, is going to stand. Uh, it will if if the beast tried to go in, they would be blown out basically with the one dagger, so probably not a great idea. Uh, they don't know that, of course, but, you know, it is something to consider that it could happen. Here's a tech negotiation for Helena. Of course, she's not blocked. And uh, that's a very strong play because it gives you a lot of options for next round. We see a reveal of three picking up an Arrakis Liaison for Tessia. Baron's going to reveal for two, one extra power, but no troops in the conflict. Not right now. Probably just going to pick up a Another Arrakis Liaison here. Two extra cards in the Baron's deck makes it a little weird. Ooh, and gets the Sadakar Infantry. Uh, we'll see. This has been a big workhorse for Baron decks lately. They've been going kind of combat heavy Baron decks with Sadakar Infantry and deck have been very good. So players, the meta shifting a little bit around cards that most people thought were garbage but suddenly are turning out to be useful. Turns out most are useful. Here's Esmar Tuek for Helena. I think this is a very good pickup for her. The blue space, of course, is unblocked for her if her, um, at all, always. So you can always use it to go to the city space, and then it just gives you that extra um, wiggle room to go to uh, harvest spice or ship or whatever you need to do. Combat's going to happen here. The only combat card is Erevald, but nothing going on there. Tessie's going to pick up the bump with the spacing guild and is going to just activate their first... Uh, first rung of their careful observation, but that isn't going to do anything because there's no cards in hand, so that's okay. It doesn't really matter. You're not really too sad if you, you know, miss the first one, but it's, it's the, the next three you really want. So very interested to see how Sension plays this. It's going to be a very, very, very close game. I already see it. Lots and lots of um, aggression on all sides. Baron here looking for a fold space, of course, uh, is going to get both of their access cards. Oh, just one of their access cards, I'm sorry. Um, probably just going to slam this to fold space, I'd assume, though it is sketchy because um, Tessia already has access to Interstellar, and having access to Interstellar means, well, Baron's not going to be able to go there this turn, um, and not next turn either, because because Tessia will be first to act next turn. So probably I just go hard, yeah, hardy here. This has got to be a hardy, and just because of the turn order, um, wonkiness, right? Because even if you could get full space, you're not going to be able to use Interstellar for two, maybe three rounds. And that could be a problem. So Baron going to throw this in. This is going to be a master stroke. Um, and we're going to see what they chose. They chose, of course, Fremen and spacing. That seems pretty reasonable. Point for the Baron. Point for the Baron. So we're looking at Baron on three points, Tessia on two, and the rest. And, uh, Beast on, um, Beast on one, Helena on one. Jamar needing to spend the water here. He's doing all those things. Please spend the water before you do the action. That would be ideal. Thank you, sir. He cannot hear me, but when he watches this video, he will get a nice thank you. And, uh, all right, Beast heading up to Smuggle. Interesting, interesting. I don't really like Smuggling all too much with Beast. Uh, I do prefer Wealth, and there is a lot of combat potential in the hand for Beast, sitting on a Signet Ring and Double Dagger, so... And the combat is Terrible Purpose, which is a great one to win. This is a great combat. So a lot of potential here for Beast. I, I see why they're heading up to Smuggling. And you can use your ring... Uh, heading to like Carthag or something, throw four troops in, use your diversion, go down, get the four, five the five Solari. It's just a really good um, tempo turn for Beast. So we're gonna see a big tempo turn last last action for Beast. Helena heads over to Still Suits, sends one troop in. Not really gonna do too much here, but just wants to get at least a third place Spice. I don't know. It's fine. A troop for a Spice. It's debatable whether that's really worth it. 
Um, she has some combat potential in hand, but not enough troops really to to threaten um, beast plus beast or baron. I think baron is really going to be the one to to lose out here. Um, baron's got some money problems. Oh, not anymore. That really really helps. So. Tessia shipping, getting the Solari early, which is, oh, man, that's that's a tough choice, and I, I don't know if that's, that was the right choice at all. As doing so gives the Baron an extra Solari. You know that their, da their, their Signet Ring was not in their opening hand, so you know they have it in hand, which basically means you just gave them an extra treacher, or an extra Intrigue card. Um, so a trip to Carthag is two Intrigue cards, uh, a, tr a troop, and potentially this combat, right? So that's scary. Um, of course, Baron has some water problems right now. Could go over to Siege Tabor and, and try to fix that. That would be a pretty forward-thinking Baron instead of just going straight in here. Um, but looks like we're gonna take some, some spice. This is always good. Uh, you always have to think about, you know, what's your game plan for, for the turns you're gonna have first access to like Highliner or first access to um, you know, whatever, whatever, wherever you want to go. And having spice is usually the thing you need to do that. And here's that play I was just talking about. Beast going in for the Signet Ring. Carthag going to throw tr uh, two troops in, plus the two from the garrison. And, oh, Secret Forces. Okay, interesting. We'll see if that comes into play later on the game. Not so much right now. Here's the Diversion. Beast is going to go down and get some Solari. That's going to boost everyone. <clears throat> Very Solari heavy game early. Everyone going up then down and not going up twice. Interesting. The fight over the Swordmaster is going to be pretty strong here. What does Helena do with their last action? They're sitting on three Persuasion. Uh, could go mining. Might, might look at mining here. Um, a mining for four, uh, four Spice with the ring, pulling out I'm not sure from the row. What do you pull? Uh, Sayadina? Sayadina is a pretty decent one. You can't pull the Treachery. The Sardaukar region is off limits. The Chris Knife could work and the Space Travel could work, but I don't really like those. All right, all right, all right. We got the Memo Quarters here. So got a bump on one of the tracks. We'll see which one they do. Artillery pops up. That's going to interest everybody. Okay, so it's great, great tech. Great, great tech. Uh, especially the Baron, who's already got an in, in infantry in their deck. Last action for Tessia is going to go get their uh, Sword Master. It's not last action, it's going to be second to last action. And then they have a uh, potential Seek Allies or Reconnaissance. Probably going to be a Seek Allies here. Seek Allies to Wealth is very strong. Not too much love for the Emperor track this game. Interestingly enough, everyone going for Fremen... Like really hard on Fremen here. Uh, Baron revealing for five and is going to pick up a Chris knife. Interesting. Looking to get that extra bump with the Fremen bond. That's a good, if you can get that going, you're in good shape. This is a good fighty Baron with some access to Fremen, so that's scary. Uh, and picks up an Arrakis liaison, of course. Reveal for the beast picks up another Arrakis liaison. It's a very interesting game we're going to see probably a shift into um some persuasion high persuasion for both of these players yellow and green uh toward the late game with all of these arrakis liaisons not a whole lot of fighting yet baron has a master tactician in hand so that could make them more susceptible to get, getting in there and just fighting a little bit uh, we'll see what they do here um now actually looking like like baron will be able to take this combat so I don't know if it's, it's probably worth it to just burn this Master Tactician to win that combat, right? I mean, they don't have any combat cards in hand, so they don't have any intrigues in hand, so you know you're going to be fine. Definitely a bit of a bummer for the Beast, who's going to end up losing this combat by one if that Master Tactician gets played. Otherwise, I mean, they don't know. Baron might just let it go, because they have a combat card, and you don't say, you know... You better have it, then uh, you might be in trouble. Here's um, three reveal, three persuasion for Tessia. Tessia picking up 
One of my not super favorite cards anymore, Space Travel. I used to love this card when uh, combats revolved around getting Highliner at the most opportune moment. Uh, it doesn't always anymore, and you see more players kind of ignoring this. It has two persuasion, which isn't nothing, but it's harder to get places with this Space Travel nowadays, with the uh, fold space usually being cluttered up. Baron is going to play the Master Tactician and is going to take this combat and a point. That puts them up to four. They're going to trash a card out of their deck. Second place is going to go to the Beast. A Beast will be fine with the Water and the Spice, but a bit sad that they didn't take this combat down. They're uh, trailing behind right now. Beast is uh, not really where they want to be. They really want to be winning early combats, and now they're going to have to start uh, picking up the pace or shifting uh, their strategy slightly. Uh, Tessia, Tessia is looking okay. Um, about to pick up another snooper at the the Fremen, but hasn't started moving up on the other tracks yet. That's okay. It's just sort of like, eh, sort of awkward. You, you don't really want to be behind on the tracks. You really want to be sailing ahead. And a lot of these cards right now, Opulence is out in the row, and no one's had the persuasion to buy it. Um, and a lot of these very powerful cards, Reverend Mother Mahayim's out there. Whoever picked up the uh, what was it? The um, memory, other memory would love that. I can't remember who picked it. I think it was Helena. No, she picked up Sayadina. She might have it in there, though. Oh, okay, it was Beast who picked up other memory. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, so, yeah, maybe Beast would want that Mo Mohaim. That'd be a pretty scary Mohaim. Okay, here is other memory Beast plan. Combat now is our conflict, is raid stockpiles. It's kind of one of the meh combats. You just sort of like let it go usually, but getting the extra spice can be nice. So there is some spice for the beast. Water was obviously paid. Helena heads to the Great Flat and harvests a bunch of spice. Big, big pull for Helena. Tessia, Tessia with a good hand, Tessia with a good buy hand too, sitting at eight persuasion currently. Uh, could cause some troubles for, for the players. I, I don't know, maybe you just fold space, or not fold space, you, maybe you space travel now. Um, you get the three Solari, the, the uh, Alliance, or, or what do you do here? Maybe you go get your snooper with, um, with the Fremen. Um, don't have a lot of spice, you don't have a lot of Solari, which can be a problem. Looks like they're gonna go fold spacing. All right, so here's the, this gets the Solari problem out of the way. Point for Tessia. Pretty decent, pretty decent. The draw finds a dune, which doesn't help too, too much, but does give her access to shipping, interstellar shipping. Uh, but looks like Baron's gonna capitalize first. That is really what they were looking for, is a shipping uh, icon. Baron gonna ship, ship up. Tessie gonna have a, a shipping icon next round, but most likely, but just just really missing it out of the draw this time. Baron with seven persuasion in hand um, could have used, now kind of awkwardly, could have used this Chris knife for the reveal ability, which they would have loved to do, but they didn't have any other access to really anything. <laughs> they only have one more card with icons. What in the world? Uh, here's a Mentat for the Beast. Seems good. Uh, Beast probably eyeing up the Swordmaster this round as well. Now sitting on eight Solari. Um, a good hand with diplomacy and access to all other spaces. So that's good. Uh, Helena goes to Desert Planet for... Where did they go? They went to... No, they haven't gone a second time. They're thinking about it. Thinking about whether you cash in the Seek Allies now, or whether you maybe recon? I, I think I don't know. That's a good question. This could be a uh, could be an argument for highlinering here, just to get some troops in your garrison to try to take this combat and kind of restock. Let's see what they do. They are going to Highliner. Yeah, I like this play a lot. This gets you the second rung for the Spacing Guild. Gets you the point there. So Helena's going to be catching up. Two water extra. Going up to two water. 
Um, hopefully they take this combat down there thinking because then they can just re restock three more uh, three more spice, but it is gonna cost them four troops total. So four troops for three spice and an entry card. Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna bother contesting this. He's really gotta get this though. If he, if he ends up like not getting this combat, it's a huge blowout, huge, huge blowout. You've spent six Solari, I'm sorry, six spice to basically do nothing. So you wanna make sure that you get your entry card and your your spice back. I really like that play. I like that play. You got to get up to level three on each of the faction tracks anyway. This 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 utterly certifies that that no one's gonna bother with this combat. They might get second place, but no one's gonna throw in 10, 10 strength here. It it'd be it's impossible for Baron to do so, and it's possible for Tessia to throw in. Uh, 10, but that would be unnecessary. She'd have to have a lot of things go right here. Um, this is looking like, oh, wait, taking it back, actually. What's going on here? Are we going to conspire instead? We are conspiring instead. Okay. All right, bit of change of heart there. I, I think this is also a fine play. Um, this is a good uh, setup turn. And getting Conspire, obviously, is just powerful. Five Solari, two troops, one Intrigue. Very strong. Picks up a Master Tactician. Might end up winning this combat anyway. So there's that. Uh, you keep two Spice in the bank. So then you can possibly select a Breeding next round. Um, you could uh, pick up that Spy Satellite. Somebody's going to be eyeing up Spy Satellites. Notice that nobody's going up on the... Um, the Bene Gesserits, and nobody's really going up on Emperor. Someone wants that, that Spy Satellites, and it's probably going to be Beast. Beast with Spy Satellites is really, really, really scary. And he does have access. He does. We'll see what happens here. Baron thinking about revealing for seven. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. I might have like actually gone tech negotiation. That would have given you the six anyway for that spot for that space. Here is a swordmaster for beast. It's gonna be a big turn for beast here. Uh, he's obviously was eyeing up that that uh, the spy satellites, but now has played the only icon they had, the only green icon they had, so can't get there this turn. So that was an interesting moment for the beast. Could have been just the thing to do is get the spy satellites, uh, then you risk not getting um, your Swordmaster next round though. No one's really in a spot to take it. Maybe, maybe Baron with Interstellar, but Tessie's gonna take Interstellar next round. So if you're thinking Tessie's gonna take Interstellar next round, then you're just fine. Here is Tessia. Looks like we are going to be seeing another one of the snooper tokens used. Gain the bonus, so they're going to get extra water. They're going to get two water from this, this movement. This is one of the stronger plays as Tessia. You really do want that um, uh, the second bump, or the second uh, effect to be as, as powerful as possible. And one of the best things you can do in this game is to not have to go to water spaces too often because they are usually bad besides giving you water. Um, still suits is fine, but you don't want to have to go there too much, right? It doesn't give you anything else but water. So if you can get extra water with this bump or with this uh, action, then you're in a better shape. Um, we see now that Beast is going to take this this Highliner. Now that's an interesting play. This might be a very aggressive uh, swing for Beast. I'm surprised a little bit. I'm surprised, especially with so much high buy, high persuasion in hand. Beast now sitting on two, three, four uh, persuasion. Not really enough for anything. Not enough for anything. So if they had hit uh, Selective Breeding, for instance, they could have bought Mother Rohayim, which they would love to have here. Um, it looks like Sadakar Legion is going to go over to Tessia. That reveals a boundless ambition. That's going to interest the Baron, and that's going to interest Beast uh, more than anyone else, but very powerful card. 
promo card given with the X expansion. A reveal for Beast, gonna show four. Gonna get X Guild Compact. I, 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 this is fine. I think this is one of the weaker new cards from X. Um, discarding two cards for a Dreadnought is fine, but you have to do it at a, uh, a guild space. So it can be powerful if you go to Highliner a lot, but man, it's expensive, isn't it? Um, I don't know, I don't know. Gonna get those enablers to make that work. So we'll see, we'll see what they do with that. Here's a Master Tactician for Agent of Zion for Helena, and that's going to probably mean that's gonna resolve this way. I think that is a great place play of Master Tactician, get second place. Oh, Plans Within Plans picked up for Beast. Now, now this it's good to know that you have this as Beast and that someone else doesn't, but usually you're not gonna be the one fighting up tracks, right? So now if Beast ends up with the Spy Satellites, they know that there's gonna be no other faction uh, points um, besides you know the obvious memo quarters, but there aren't gonna be any more in the deck. And so you're going to be able to kind of like sit back and kind of ignore them for a little while. So this is a potentially very big play for a beast. For Helena, we've got a Sayadina with no water in hand. Esmar Tuik, okay, very strong. Um, kind of a good, it's a good hand for, for Izzy, but it's gonna be interesting to see how he navigates this turn. Probably gonna go Swordmaster right away. No one's blocked except for Baron, but Baron doesn't have enough for a Swordmaster anyway. Baron actually in a bit of uh, trouble when it comes to actually getting um, economy going. So we're gonna see an up down for Tessia and the interstellar shipping. I like this way, the way that this game has really shaped out. Everyone's had some time with interstellar, but it's not being overly dictated by any one player. By the way, we are in, um, we are in round four. Secure Imperial Basin is the conflict, so this is one you do want to win. Did did uh, take the bump? Oh, looks like they took the bump with the with the emperor. Okay. It's gonna be a down for Baron uh, with the smuggling, getting two troops, a bump with someone, and then what? Cannot put guys in, bud. Sorry about that. Um. And so a bump and then some Solari or Spice. Probably gonna take the Solari here. It needs to get his Swordmaster going. Where are you gonna take the bump? BG, okay, BG's going up. Interestingly, nobody's gone for the Spice Satellites. I would have suspected that everyone would have jumped at this card. This, this tile is just insanely busted. Um, there's also an artillery, which which you know will eventually see used eventually, but no one's gone up for tech yet. No one's really, no one's really uh, that interested in tech. Takes the Solari. Now it's Beast. Here's a signet ring. Where do you go? Okay, research station. Very unconventional early um, early research station for Beast. Wow, picks up other memory, reconnaissance, convincing. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight persuasion. Not quite. Is gonna be wanting to get the extra point. So this looks like a tech negotiation for Beast, picking up the spy satellites, a very powerful turn for, for Beast. Uh, Sayadina for for uh, Helena, and that is going to uh, send her up to Selective breeding, of course. Trashing a dagger and picks up some good persuasion. So sitting at five persuasion now. Not enough for high council. Uh, Esmar is gonna be probably the play next. Getting the second bump with the spacing guild. One turn, I think, behind where you'd want it to be, right? You wanna play it last turn so that you get the access to Interstellar first. Doesn't really work out this way in, in uh, practice. High council for Tessia. Um, another thing that Tessie wants to do is get High Council as soon as possible. One more. He's to pay one more. Yep. And um, that seems to be right on schedule for Tessia. Now, what does Baron do? Baron's got a lot of options. Baron's sitting on a fold space card they're going to want to use here. Now, could go to Mentat. Could go to Mentat and then see what you get. Uh, other options, I think it's gotta be Mentat. Draw two cards, see if you can buy high this round. There is a Chome Directorship in the row, folks. 
There's a Chome director, directorship, and Beast has enough for it. Um, the big question I have for everyone is, if you see this card and this tech tile, which one do you go for? Like, what do you do? Do you go for the Spy Satellites, which is guaranteed points, or do you go for the Chome uh, directorship, which gives you a couple of immediate points, but possibly doesn't get you the win? I mean, there's a lot of things to think about here. I do not know what the best play is. Fold space um, for the Baron is probably, you know, I don't know. Um, Mentat, I think, maybe. But he wants to keep his, his uh, money on eight. So do you win this combat? Do you try to go, oh, you can't really win this combat, can you? Wealth gets you what? Nothing. Okay. So we're getting intrigue. Oh, there's a demand respect, which isn't going to be useful this round. Can't do anything with that this round, but it is good to have. Gets the point for the Bene Gesserit. Here is a... Oh, artillery for the beast. Interesting. Uh, well, I mean, that's pretty much you're going to win this combat, right? But here comes a wind traps for replacement. Agent of Zion seeing that, deciding whether they want that right now. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to take it. All right. This keeps you flexible for if the Ixian Engineer shows up. Getting a lot of these tech tiles. You don't need too many. It's kind of like sitting on two and then getting the third one when you see an Ixian Engineer is pretty good. Now what does uh, Tessie do? Tessie looking through her deck, having a little think about this. So they have three persuasion. Uh, the row is looking pretty bad for her, actually. So what is the play? Do you ring here? You do. You ring and you shift down, spacing up. What, Emperor? I guess you get Emperor that gives you two extra troops. That's good, right? Oh no, this is the, the extra bump. Okay, you can take it and get an extra bump. See, it picks up a recruitment mission. Uh, not gonna help out this round, but next couple rounds maybe. Could be nice. See if she throws any combat troops in here. Any troops in the combat. Looks like just one. Would love that two water. Gonna go down oh down with the Fremen, up with the uh Emperor. Alright, takes the extra point the extra point here. Uh loses a point, gains a point, yes. Um, and then we'll get the extra troops with the next snooper token. Uh, which is going to be Bene Gesserit. or not? Yeah, so so that's the one you always want last is that Bene Gesserit. As a as a note for players who want to learn how to play Tessia correctly, uh, take note of this play. Um, you go somewhere early, usually usually Fremen, um, then shift into the fold space, and then you know you want to hit the second one as uh, the fold space. I'm sorry, the spacing guild. Third one you want to hit is wealth uh, emperor. And then the last one you want is the Bene Gesserit because those intrigue cards are so massive. And getting free intrigue cards is a big deal. Okay, uh, we see a buy of four for Baron. Picks up a Scout and an Arrakis Liaison. And here's a Chome for, for Beast. Okay, revealing Spice Trader. We see this, this row is really moving along. Arrakis Recruiter, Spice Trader, Boundless, Treachery, Reverend. This is a great row. So Beast is going up with everything. That's green. I'm trying to get that token behind the behind the board. There he goes. I'll get it all sorted out. The more I see this game playing out, the less I think that anyone's going to bother with Spy Satellites. Which I think is a good thing. I, I really don't like this tile. I wish I wish it wasn't a four cost. I wish it was a little more expensive. 
maybe no one would buy it at five cost, but you know, you get like a discount anyway. I don't know. Reveal for Helena. Picks up Mohayim. That's a big pickup. Uses Esmar as the best uh, best way to get some extra bonuses. Um, so, Beast is going to win this combat. Looks like no one's going to fully challenge it. And that makes a lot of sense. Beast going up to four points, gets the banner on Imperial Basin, and next up is Sort Through the Chaos, and we shall sort through it as soon as everyone draws. There we go. Uh, Chaos having been sorted. What about this hand from Tessia? Wow. So we've got Fold Space, Fold Space. going to depend on what they draw, but very strong potential, um, especially with this re recruitment mission. They still have all their normal cards in the deck, haven't trashed anything yet. So maybe looking at a trip to the Selective Breeding this action. A trip to Selective Breeding would draw three cards, trashing one. Um, that's pretty good. The only problem, the only problem I see is that they don't have anything in their discard pile to trash. So they either have to trash the fold space to the action, which they can do. They could draw, then trash it. They can do all their things in any order. Or they'd have to trash like their Dune or their Convincing, which is less appealing. Looks like we're going to see a Dune to Interstellar first. Makes sense. Makes sense. Take your turns when you can. Here's a Baron to Yup. The uh, Swordmaster. Got to play your card though. There we go. All right. Everyone is on track. Beast, what are you doing here? Looking at a pretty good hand. This hand is decent. Uh, I really want to get that X-Guild Compact to work, and can do if he goes like Great Flat or Haga Basin first action, which looks like that's going to be the play. Oh, or obviously, our Imperial Basin. Imperial Basin for four spice. Well, I mean, call me, you know, color me red. I'm, I'm embarrassed I missed that. So that's going to be a big, big swing for Beast. And it looks like we're going to see another Highliner here for Beast. To start threatening that Spacing Guild Alliance. Helena looking at a decent hand, a pretty like vanilla hand actually, not too much going on here, but you know, strong stuff. Thinking about what they're gonna buy, probably gonna ring one of these other um, major cards up here, Treachery, probably not the Spice Hunter, maybe a Landing Rights. Landing Rights is a pretty good card for Helena. She hasn't done a lot of shipping this game, in fact, done none, so we'll see if that's in the cards. Here's a, a Diplomacy, where do you go? You have access to breeding, yeah, okay. This cuts Tessia off of breeding, so that's pretty good. Gets Helena her first major point here, so that's great. Um, and has to decide what they're trashing. Trash is a dagger, so Helena not interested in combat this game. Gonna be drawing two. Picks up Sayadina and has the, the bond, so this is a potential two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten persuasion for for Helena. Big, 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 big deal. Now, if she can get up the tracks a little bit, we're going to be in business for, for Helena. Uh, i got to always pull for the last position person. Here's Tessia going to research station. That is probably the backup play for selective breeding, I'd imagine. So it's going to draw one, then three. Total of four, and sees... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight persuasion. Doesn't quite get there, but has a fold space and a chance to, or it has the recruitment mission as well, so can buy uh, the Spice Must Flow this turn. So this is a pretty good turn for Tessia too. So we're gonna see two at least Spice Must Flows this turn. Oh, I'm sorry, and also has the two from the High Council, so it's sitting at quite a lot. Sitting at a 10 at the moment. Baron's hand is bad. <laughs> Baron's hand is just poopy. Baron needs to go get some Carthag stuff, but is gonna go get some water. Okay, this, uh, this is fine. I like Siege. Uh, you need the water. You need to be start. You need to start harvesting some spice, or you're gonna fall behind. You need the spice to go to Highliner to get stuff in. You need it for demand respect. You need lots of spice. Do not forget your water. Um. 
there we go and uh, throws three troops in which i think is respectable but you know this is a kind of questionable combat this used to be one of my favorite combats in the base game because of the tempo it gives you it is very good baron would like to have the extra action next round that's the main thing they don't have their they just got their swordmaster this round so um they will have four actions next round if they get this two solari potential mentat right there's there's a lot of things that this could mean the extra intrigue is also nice uh, Beast here is probably eyeing up just a Highliner. You'd think you just Highliner here. I don't know what else you're going to do. He's not going to. Oh, no. Okay. He's going up to Conspire. All right, Conspire. Conspire makes sense. Get the point with the with the Emperor. Yep. Get all the bonus things. There we go. It is a little tricky to pull those out sometimes. I'm going to get two troops, five Solari, and the Intrigue. We'll see what they get. Get your Intrigue, and it is an Infiltrate. Ooh, okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. Can still go to, uh, like, say, Selective. Oh, no, I can't go to Selective. I'm so sorry. Only has access to the Guild. I don't know if that's really something you need, though, right? At this point, do you bother with the Guild? Oh, he's a use Sayadina. What? I don't know about that. I think that's a misplay. I'm going to call it. I think that's a misplay. Getting the water is great, but this would have been a spice muscle. Does he have enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, and not enough Solari for men, for, for High Council? I think that's a misplay. I think that's just... You hold that, right? For the spice. You gotta get spice. Maybe, but maybe he's falling behind on the tracks and really, really wants those. I mean, there's still a spice satellites up here. No one's got bothered getting it. Uh, Tessie's gonna be playing the spice trader. We'll be using the effect to discard that fold space and gain two spice. Um, and, and just shipped. I mean, yeah, sure. It's a pretty big turn for Tessia. Baron has to decide what they want to do here. They only have four buy. They only have four persuasion. They better either uh, reveal or make something out of this. This is going to be a Haga Basin for the Baron. It gets you to five spice. Not where you really want to be. Uh, is your plan to go to selective or are you trying to win combats? Because five Solari will get you to conspire. You are really far behind on the Emperor track, though. So, I mean, maybe it's just I win this combat. I play demand respect. I go up. Like, I guess that's got to be the play here. It's a fold space for beast. All right. Interesting. Gets does use the X guild to do that. Discards a bunch of cards. Mentat for Helena. All right. Ooh, big pickup here. As Martuek gets her a bunch of spice, bunch of Solari. Uh, do you use it here to go up for a point? I mean, it's a point. It's a point. You can't be blocked. I think you do. I think you go Carthag. Can you win this combat? Can you win this combat? You can tie the beast. You can tie the beast. No, you can't. I'm not beast. Uh, Baron. You can tie Baron. You're not going to win against Tessia, who has gone in here denying the Baron. Big deal. The eight power for Tessia is going to get it done. Wow. Okay. Um, Helena deciding what to do with this ring. He's going to pick up Treachery. He has enough to buy it and to use Esmar. Still surprised with the no Spice Must Flow. But, you know, maybe, maybe you see something I don't. Early Spice Must Flow. This is round five. You have two, maybe three rounds left. Got to start buying points, man. Players are on five points. They're about to get another one. Someone's about to get a point with uh, 
Well, maybe not right now, but a little later. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She picked up what? What did she buy? It's not. I was still thinking. Oh, it still hasn't decided yet. Okay, it is a spice. Okay, I was gonna say you don't pick up a spice with nine. That seems weird. I mean, you could, right? I mean, you could definitely recruitment mission, picking up something else in the row and then putting it on top of your deck. That's fine. But you probably have that access next round where you don't have nine. And if that's the case, then I think you're better off doing the what you do now, generally. There's six here to, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be eight cards in the discard pile. You might only get to see two more hands, maybe three. Helena goes to research station and is gonna reveal for spice two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Big, big play. All right, I love it. All right, there was a plan. I love it. I love it. So the forethought of using Sayadina uh, for still suits to eventually get to research station makes a lot of sense, especially if you planned on going Mentat. That was a great buy. So it's going to be able to pick up the. Uh, oh wow! Doesn't go Spice gets Shifting and the Worm Rider. So is, is maybe figuring that they're going to be able to to combat out a couple points here. That's good. Interesting. Interesting. Another Worm Riders comes up. Can't avoid them. Wow. And now with Mohayim, I mean, you do have some Bene Gesserit, so potential Bene Gesserit combo uh, going on. Looks like Tessie is going to take it down. Picks up an ambush. Fine card, fine card. Always like to see those. Whoa! Whoa! What? What? This hand is stacked. Holy crap. Oh, I'm interested to see what Helena's going to do with this hand. All right, we have Esmar Tuix shifting, Sidena Signet, and Treachery. Uh, Tessie is sitting on a bunch of garbage, and they needed to get through this. This is going to be a bad turn for them. Dagger, Dagger, Convincing, Dune, Signet. Uh, Baron's got an okay hand, can go for some combat this turn, has his Sadakar infantry in hand, and their Signet Ring to go for a Carthag potential uh, double intrigue play, which is probably what they're going to do here. Oh no, they're going to ship. Okay. Dump a dump. Let's just go shipping. It's fine. Um, gets Counselor's Dispensation. Uh, not gonna do for the baron just some more spice for the beast monopolizing that spice has access to exactly zero um faction spaces this round has infiltrate so i don't, I don't know what they're gonna do with this hand this is a pretty bad hand it's pretty bad now let's see what helena does uh, this helena hand is is some potential some real potential and he's gonna have to think about it some real, real potential here. What do you play first? Do you treachery? Treachery to wealth to try to steal this, take the alliance away? Do you try to, do you take Bene Gesserit? Um, I mean, you have so many options here, so many options. It's insane how many options Helena has. I, I don't know, there's just too many. We'll see what they do. This is, uh, I, I, just so many things. So, five spice. You could selective. You could trash Esmar, getting Solari and spice. You could draw three cards. Then you could get two guys in the combat with the treachery and the extra intrigue card. Next action. Well, what do you do next action? I, I don't know. Maybe this is a for a still suits. Yeah, okay. I like this play too. Still suits. Still suits for two water. It's going to be two water, then probably Siege Tabor. So a point for Helena. This is going to be a big turn for Agent of Zion. Really big turn. Watch this, folks. It's going to be really, nas really nasty. Somebody doesn't go to Siege. 
and they don't see, he's trying to go to Siege, then they are going to be in some serious trouble because picking up Saidina back to back is nuts, is just insane. We're going to see a Esmar to Siege. Esmar to Siege, pick up the water. We're going to see a Saidina to wherever. Probably Bene Gesserit drawing cards. Uh, getting a point. Um, wow. Okay. This is the Agent of Zion catch-up turn, pretty much. <laughs> Let's get there, right? Uh, Tessia. Tessia has gone to Research Station and has picked up a pretty pretty decent hand of, of access. Fold Space and Diplomacy, but still doesn't have the buy, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, does get there with the recruitment mission, so is okay. So Tessia with a potential another spice must flow. Pot potentially kind of kind of running away here. Oh, okay. Well, well, Helena can never be blocked, so it doesn't matter. But Baron Vladimir Hakonan going to Siege Tabor. Going to throw a troop in. Or two. Going to try to win this combat. I don't know about that. They're just seemingly... They've been shipping a lot, but then they're not combating enough. I don't know. Here comes... All right, here we go. Here's High Council for the Beast. Beast sitting on two uh, really decent cards. One that rewards High Council, um, and one that lets them go wherever they want. So we'll, we'll see a pretty decent Beast turn. Uh, beast also sitting on not a lot of Persuasion. No, just the four. Here's Tuuk to the siege tabor as called here here comes the troop here comes the water everyone probably knows what's happening now probably and it's gonna be a really big one because if they could even potentially oh they're gonna they are gonna discard okay i like it discarding the shifting allegiances is a good play here because you're just not using it you're not using it this round it doesn't matter it's just you get an extra influence and a card, right? Which is a point. You might as well. So that's that's really smart. You might as well use it in this case. Uh, hello. Tessia with tech negotiation? Tessia still could get a point from spy satellites? Uh, could get flagship for a point and use it? Has a lot of options here. I probably the flagship is the best play. I don't know. Maybe not. It's a point either way. Point for four spice or a point for eight spice. Well, I guess seven spice plus the tech negotiation space. This has got to be a tech negotiation play, right? I don't know what else you do here. Um, you want to keep the cards in your hand. I like using the dagger here. Now, this is a smart play. It might seem like an obvious play, but definitely the dagger here. Okay, picks up the flagship. Picks up the flagship. All right. And we reveal training drones. That's okay. It's okay. The point here for Tessia means they're going to be at eight after this round. Uh, Tessia now sitting on seven points. And everyone needs to be a little bit wary of letting Tessia win at level three, okay? Because it's going to be reveal for a point, and then potentially that's it in the next round. So they're going to have to be careful. Uh, could be a big turn for Beast, because um, Beast needs to win this combat. Baron also needs something big here. Okay, Baron's going to go to Hardy Warriors, wants to win this combat. It's going to go throw two guys in. It's going to go up to a total of 8 plus 2, 10 power. Um, that will be enough at the moment, but it's probably not going to stand. Now, Baron seems to be a little bit light on action this game, like having... Not high enough com uh, uh, impact cards in their deck. Just using a lot of the same, you know, Rackus Liaison, Diplomacy, Signet Ring over and over again. Not having a whole lot of, like, high impact cards. So here's a Signet Ring for Beast. Beast can't go there unless they play. Oh, they did play Infiltrate. Is going to ship. Going to ship up. 
This is interesting. So Beast saying that they don't really care about this combat. They're going for the next one. They will have first access to interstellar shipping next round. This is a big, big deal. Beast having first access to interstellar next round means they can get whatever they want from the tech tiles. They have eight spice. All right, here's what we're talking about. Sayadina, here's a point for Sayadina. Here's uh, two cards with uh, with the selective breeding. And what did we hit here? We hit the, did we hit the shifting allegiances again? We did. Shifting allegiances, we go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven, eight. Oh, eight. <laughs> what? No. Oh my God. Almost a perfect turn for Helena, picking up just the Sidena, but almost got, almost got the Spice Must Flow. Wow. That's impressive. All right, we're still in play for Tessia, and Baron's revealing for a measly three. He's picking up a Fadekin Death Commando. That would have been nice for the Baron earlier. Very strong card. They're already well into uh, Fremen, uh, Fremen Bond. And Beast having a little look here. He's only got two cards in the deck, so he's going to be thinking about what am I going to do here for next turn? What am I going to draw? Am I going to get the symbols I need? All right. Beast going to go just over Helena in combat, or in the conflict, and we're going to see a very powerful Tessia still with an action. That tempo play from Sword Through the Chaos is... It's really doing work here. Helena going to pick up the Worm Riders. Has the extra, has the Alliance, so will will be worth six swords. Here is a reveal. With, a reveal without playing the last action. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They could have played a Dune, or I guess that's it. So maybe that's that makes sense. Just reveal, get to eight. Wow. Okay. Now it's starting to look like a two-horse race between Tessia and Helena, and the rest are starting to fall behind. This is a huge, huge blowout. The Baron not able to use this demand respect. Still might by the end of the game, but that is one of the worst things. You, you have these cards you need to use. You have to cash them in, but you can't cash them in. Wait, what? That's the wrong one. And, wow. Wow. Okay. Tessia is just taking this down. Taking it down. Um, and no one can do anything about it. It's just insane. All right. Very low combat from everybody. I would have liked to see a little bit more committal uh, play here, especially from Beast. Was sitting with a reconnaissance, but but could have could have gone some Carthag and Arakeen shenanigans a little bit more. Uh, all right, what do they see here? It is Beast. Beast looking for a yellow. Finds a yellow. Is going to be shipping. I mean, this is the best play here. Probably going to get this troop transports. I'd imagine up and down. Troop transports. It sure is. So troop transports, and they're sitting on a Rekus Recruiter and Dagger with a an artillery. So this is a potential, right, a potential beast turn, catch back up turn, but it might not be enough. Here's three into combat. We see a disposal facility, which is just too late. Here's the diplomacy. Yep. There's the alliance for Helena. It's gonna trash a card. What do you trash here? Something that's costs two, or it's a dagger, or something. I think she got rid of all her daggers. Something that has a trash ability, All right? If there is one, I don't think there are anymore. Potential turn for Helena to win the game this round if they win the combat and buy Spice Must Flow. That's four points. That's four points. Take Sayadina out. Wow. Okay, so it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine persuasion. Needs to find a way into the combat. 
can't quite get there yet, uh, is going to probably want to min tech here, I would imagine. Tessia plays to Arakeen, trying to fix this ugly hand, but really doesn't get there. Oh, okay, does find a Sadakar Legion. That helps. That helps. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. It's potential six power if they have the troops in combat, or in the, in the garrison. No one needs to... Don't, don't just, like, fall asleep this, this round, guys, just because they don't have any Solari. You can still win the game this round. They're sitting at 7-8 Persuasion. They just need one more. It currently does no water to do so. So what's the Baron do here? It's a scout play to where? To smuggling. Okay. Goes down. Takes what? Needs... Who is the Baron chasing? Baron's chasing the uh, Fremen Alliance, and that is going to worry Helena. However... The Baron doesn't know is there is a shifting alliances allegiances in hand, and that is not going to let that stand. Baron just needs to get demand respect going. That's that's like number one. I'm surprised actually that the Baron is still shipping when they need to get this thing going. They absolutely need intrigue cards, and they need to go and fight. Okay, Beast is just getting more tech. This is just maybe unnecessary, but here comes a dreadnought. Uh, do they think they have Grand Conspiracy in hand? This isn't Grand Conspiracy. These are plans within plans. They're pretty close to doing it. They need a, a bump on three tracks, though. Or, or two more for a point. They're not quite there yet. Um, Baron has a potential point in hand with Opulence, so that's pretty big. But they're so far behind right now with five points that I'm not sure they're going to be able to catch up. What's Helena do here? It's got to be a shifting to Mentat, right? Shifting to Mentat seems like just the best thing you could possibly do. The big problem is, is you're giving up spice for that. Um, you could shift to like Imperial Basin. That keeps you spice neutral. It gives the beast a spice, which could be a bad play. He doesn't have any access, but you don't know that. So we'll see what they do here. It's going to be to Mentat. Okay. It's going to be Dementa. Going to draw a card. Draws Mohayim. Big, big. It's a big play. Doesn't have any way to use it, but it's going to get two Persuasion. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now has nine. It's going to be interesting to see what they do here. Are they going to pay? It's going to pay. Where do you go? Do you just go down, then back up? With the Fremen? Or down, back up? Down there. Up. Okay, down with down with the Emperor. Down with the Emperor. Down with the Emperor. Uh, up with Fremen. And that's going to solidify that alliance. The Baron's hopes are dashed. Uh, some very good blocking going on here. Helena looking at wanting to win this combat but now is like not ha doesn't have a whole lot of options uh could re reconnaissance to arakeen that's probably the play here because it's probably persuasion neutral if you if you've thinned your deck correctly it's probably persuasion neutral if it's persuasion neutral you definitely do that and throw as many troops as you possibly can in the goal here would be to get second place if you get first place you can get two points maybe I suppose. What does uh, Tessia do here? Tessia's play has got to be Carthag, I suppose, right? Maybe. Um, could be. Could be for spice. Oh no, they don't have any. They could get two spice from from Imperial, but that gives again the beast spice, and no one wants to do that. Again, sitting at eight persuasion. Eight persuasion. No, has access to the emperor, but I, I don't know. I mean, that would get them the last point. Maybe that's to just take the emperor point, take the emperor point, and just say like, "All right, that's it. Let's just go for it." I mean, what else do you do here? You don't have access to Fremen. You don't need the water anyway. 
you don't have access to any of the other factions. Uh, Helena is reconsidering something here. It's going to go down with the... Oh. Helena going to go down with the Bene Gesserit instead. I don't know about that. All right, here's a Sudakar Legion to Wealth for, for Tessia. That's a pretty strong play. Four troops in combat. Uh, they don't have a Rapid, but we haven't seen Rapid yet. But, I mean, that's a lot of troops. Everyone's got to be a little concerned about Tessia winning this combat as well. Everyone's going to have to think a little bit about how many troops you send in. There's only so many actions left. Baron was hoping to reveal with this uh, Chris knife and take that alliance, but isn't going to get there. Now we're just going to have a Carthag play, probably. Oh no, Siege Tabor. I guess? What is the water for, I wonder? I just think there's going to be another round. Okay, they think there's going to be another round. I don't think there's going to be another round, guys. <laughs> what? What is happening here? I, I don't understand the water. What are you using the water for? I mean, just need to take the Intrigue card, right? Just take the Intrigue card? I don't know. It, it's, it's a little weird. Okay, here's Secret Forces. Here's the Beast doing Beast things. Gonna get a bunch of troops in here. Gonna put them all in. How many was that? Should have been one, two, three, four, four. Oh, five. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the uh, drones. Yep, yep. Cool, cool. That seems like a good play here. And the beast is going to take three points here. I don't think anyone's going to be able to do anything about this. It's just kind of bad posturing for the other players to kind of like go in with three here. I mean, you just want to get second place for a point, right? But you got to always be a little bit worried. There's still an agent left. Tessie could get a point here too, and that puts her up to 11. Now that's almost out of reach. And everyone's going to have to be thinking about how can I get second place? How can I get my points? Now here's a point for Helena. Gets the Intrigue card. Finesse. Grand Conspiracy. Do they... High seat? No, they don't have a seat. Don't have a seat. Wait, what? Oh, and they stole, they stole the Counselor's Dispensation as well? Um, so they need a seat... And they need a Spice Must Flow. They don't have a Spice Must Flow, but they will get it this turn. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, no, they won't. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. No access. No access. All right, here's Helena. Are you just going to go down and up with the... What do you do? There's a point. That puts you up to eight. Okay. You you risk the you risk the baron taking your alliance away here. You do risk the baron taking your alliance away. You this is going to be a huge blowout. Huge blowout for the for Helena. So can't see it possibly coming. There's a dispatch and envoy in baron's hand and a way to get there. A dispatch and envoy with the Arrakis Liaison, and revealing a Chris Knife does it, takes the Alliance away. Oh, no. Okay, so we're going to see some insanity here. Um, we saw flagship use from Tessia. Going to put four troops in. Can put five in then, plus two. So can put them all in. That's how it works. Oh, oh no! Be what is Baron doing? What is what is Baron doing? Baron's thinking about hitting Highliner. It was at two. 
I thought he was at one. He's at two. All right, sure. Uh, is going to go to Highliner here. I, I just don't agree with this play. But I guess if you're the Baron, you've got to win the combat. It's a two-pointer. It's a two-point swing, though, against Blue if you do that, if you if you take away the Alliance. But does that get you there? I don't, th I don't think so. So this puts Green up to... 16 beast is sitting at 22 with a one extra in hand so 23 it's not going to be enough for the baron it's it's not enough it's just 16 it's it's just 20 for the baron it's just not enough oh yeah plus, plus artillery how would you ever beat that you just want the point. It's a. It's better to flip the flip the alliance. Yeah, I mean, we didn't know. I mean, players don't know that they don't have access, but probably could have figured without a diplomacy, and got rid of the Sayadina that they didn't have access to the still suits or hardy warriors. And and Helena is gonna probably take second place here. This has got to be a big sigh of relief. A big sigh of relief. What do you do here as Helena? You can't, there's nothing you can draw that would get you to spice. So you're just playing for second place here. What's the best thing you can do? Probably just another, like, maybe Carthag? You can't get to high, well, can, can you even, there's no way you can do it, right? There's no way you can get high, uh, not high, liner, high council. There's no way you can get high council. So it's just got to be Carthag. Yeah, okay, it's Carthag. Wow, that's an unfortunate, unfortunate uh, turn of events. There's a second wave. Um, can't get second, right? This is just five, six, seven. Can't quite get there. It's unfortunate. It would have been an extra point for Helena. Two extra points, actually, with the Spice Must Flow and um this grand conspiracy if they had a high council seat they just weren't able to get there this turn then maybe the play instead of drawing with the shifting allegiances and, I, and it, it did look like shifting allegiances was the play to to mentat but maybe the play was actually the high council it would have been a harder play to see a harder play to see but i think that that was probably the play in any case This is going to be how it ends. Um, the beast is going to end up taking it down, getting three points. Getting three points. And then Helena is going to win on tiebreakers. Interesting. There is a Chomarchy out there, but nobody, nobody picked it up. No one wanted it. If the beast picked that up instead of the uh, training drones, they would have got second place. It's hard to see those things. It's a hard plays. Hard plays to make. Uh, does not have plans within plans at all, sadly. Baron doesn't have ten or more Solari. It's either you know it's always unfortunate when you when you draw a war chest and you have opulence in your deck. This has happened to me before. Where you're like, well, it's a point either way. So here is three for the beast. Oh, it puts him up to nine. Nine. I missed one. I see. He's he missed missed one here. Wow. Pretty dang close. Pretty close. After all, it turns out to be a ten nine eight seven game. Wow. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, let's go. Let's go talk to the group here. Let's see what they say. It's uh, yeah. There's a plans. The plans. It doesn't work. There's a war chest that doesn't work, and there's a demand respect that doesn't work. 
Hey folks, how's it going? Gonna win a uh, a battle. Hello. Good, good game. Every time I, good game. Every time I thought I was gonna win a battle, it. somebody somebody beat me, and I couldn't get the uh, I couldn't get that out. That was know. tragic. I, I twice, off. twice that happened. This yeah, demand respect I know. Just twice. Yeah. Sat in your yeah. hand and rotted. It's it's the worst feeling when you're like, I just need to win one combat. I don't care which one it is, just and everyone just just jumps in front of you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even the ones that I didn't think people would be going for, like somebody jumped up. I think it was Sentient actually, and yeah, I uh, yeah, I just couldn't get it going. I, like my early game started off hot, and then I just couldn't well, do that's anything. That's the Baron. The Baron is the Baron. He starts very Baron, strong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And this was like right, a, good I game, made gentlemen. some mistakes too. I yeah, made some mistakes. Good, good game. I, I was uh, Zion. I was I was. We're musing, I'm musing on this, uh, on the Mentat play, which seemed like to me the right play anyway. And I was like, well, maybe it was a high council play. Like if you went to high council, would you have got there? Would you have gotten two so, points? Um, it depends, right? If I get, if I, off of that uh, Mentat, if I draw a Signet, then I go high council. If I draw uh, Worm Riders, right. then I play uh, into here and end up here. Right, so. right. Oh, it's yeah, uh, so uh, awkward I, I that last draw. I would imagine people are wondering why I trashed Sayadina. That's just because the odds of me drawing my Arrakis liaison mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, Sayadina mm -hmm. is so low. And then also mm -hmm. the odds of me uh, playing like that, like this is just not going to happen. Right. So like Sayadina is dead at that point with, with no water. There was also a Baron play at the end here, which would have swapped alliances, which I, I'm surprised if you didn't you didn't go for it. Whereas like you had uh, this dispatch an envoy with this card to here, and then you yeah. reveal with Chris Knife, and that would have taken the alliance away. And I was wondering why you didn't do it. I was I... like, oh yeah, well you went for the. I mean, points is a point, but this is two points essentially. It's a swap. I thought. Yeah, yeah. I honestly, I saw that, and I, for some reason, I thought he was all the way to the top. So that was my initial play was mm -hmm. to do that to keep the Fremen bond mm -hmm. and to go up there. And for some reason, when I looked, I thought he was at the top, and it was just a huge mistake on my part. I was doing hail mary, he, fucking yeah, intrigues. This, this was like, yeah, well, that was I, good. Yeah, it was good. It's a great card. It's like, oh well, here's the gamble. You know, let's see if it pays off. It was, it was. Really I mean, close. he was at a top. Just, it was at the top, yeah. I think, finesse. I think where I went wrong was I think it was two rounds ago. I could have kept sight in in hand mm -hmm. and gone to high council mm -hmm. for a spice must flow. Yeah, I, I talked about that one. Yeah, I was like, you could have done that. I thought your play though with keeping Sidena doing the the water by a point play was just fine as well. Um, it's just with nobody really contesting these. Like I just needed to to get something else on these tracks yeah like yeah. I, I just could never get up there yeah yeah the, like, i i yeah for some reason me on a I, thought clock. At the for top. Sure. I thought i thought uh agent got to the top and so because i saw he that did. i'm like he oh did. i'm gonna do that he did he right did. yeah he was at the yeah. top yeah. and then yeah, he, he went shifted down yeah. yeah oh i never i didn't honestly i didn't pay attention to that because i saw that at the beginning i'm like oh i'm gonna take this alliance from him and I think I should have got it sooner because I was way up there on the uh, mm -hmm. on the Fremen real quick. And then I, uh, yeah, I, I should have got it before him, to be honest. There's a couple bad blunders I made, but it was a fun game. Good job. Oh, yeah. That was great to watch. Uh, Very yeah. entertaining. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, it was, it was a weird <laughs> testing game for me. I didn't get all my supers, which is the first. I know it, it seemed like it was kind of a sort of normal Tessia game. You went the places you wanted to go in the order you wanted to do them. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. that's what she does. She does this exact thing every game. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah was, exactly. I was considering early with this Highliner play, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, that's what's my satellites. Why was nobody like, grabbing like, this? <laughs> like, it's such yeah, a big game. Um, yeah. Because I was gambling on Chome. Oh yeah. So like, okay. Yeah. 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 Like That's if I'd been able to get get like I don't want to commit to this if I can get Chome. Oh yeah, I know, I know. And and there were so many awkward things. Like plans within plans does not work with this card at all. And so you're like, well, I guess maybe I'll get this. Like I think, I don't know, man. I it this happens so much when I'm playing Beast. So, like I get something that I just can't fulfill. No, no, no. It was a high council one, which like cost me entire tour. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> the High Council did nothing except uh, enable me to play that. Yeah, <laughs> that. Okay. yeah exactly. <laughs> all right, good game, gentlemen. Y'all take it good easy. Game. Good game, everybody. Yeah, um, good game, guys. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time. Take care.